Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In my last tutorial, I taught you how to create your own palette and use that palette to color your portraits. I also taught you how to pick three primary colors, forming a triangle for us to pick colors from. And then from there, I taught you how to pick your black and whites. And also we learned that skin tones are made from gray plus red or orange. And the base skin tone is made from gray plus any color at all. And I lastly showed you how to paint the portrait and also solve problems like insufficient color and also if you want to add a new color in. So now let's rearrange the palette into something that is convenient for us to keep and refer to. So now I'm just dropping my primary colors in the red, yellow and blue and these are all going into hexagon shapes. Hexagon shapes means that we actually determine the swatch when we are creating the palette and this is my primary colors. Now I'm dropping in my black and white swatches into two other hexagon shapes because we also have to determine our black and white from the beginning and these are going to be my neutral colors. And now I'm going to drop in my secondary colors which is my orange, green and purple into the circle shapes. So circle shapes means that I did not pick the swatches from the get-go but these swatches comes from mixing the colors that I picked from the beginning. And it is very important for us to show the secondary colors from the tints that we mix whether the secondary colors are from the main swatches or not this is because knowing how vibrant or how dull the secondary color is can inform us of what kind of painting that we can do so for example this palette has very dull greens and purples so this palette is definitely not suitable for landscape painting from this, you will know whether the palette is suitable for your painting or not. Then at the bottom, we are also going to place in our skin tone. So the base skin tone goes in the center, the orange version goes to the right and the red version goes to the left. This is a very convenient way for us to save the palette and we can easily pick the colors that we want to from here. And it is considered a triadic color palette because it has three colors. To test this out on a portrait, first have an outline in one layer. Then have your shading below your outline layer but for this layer when you do the shading you cannot pick shades of grey to paint like this like what I'm doing now is completely wrong. What you should actually do is actually use black to paint but when you're painting use a light touch see how there's streaks of lighter greys just by using a light touch so you're supposed to paint like this so basically I will use a light touch to simply scribble down some shading and then I'll use the smudge tool to smudge the shading away so this is how you can prepare your shading layer so let me show you again I'm scribbling lightly and then I'm smudging so if I press harder I actually have a stronger value of black but if I press softer I have a light grey and then I smudge the values away to blend them away. You can use this method to quickly shade your portrait this way just don't be very neat because this is just for testing there's no need to create a great painting here but when you get to the highlights section you can't paint with white instead you should use the eraser to erase away the highlights. Once you're done, you should have another layer called base with a color of yellow and blue and red just to separate like the mouth, the eyes, the nose or the hair even. Anything that you would like to assign a separate color every time you test. Once you have these three layers, you are ready to begin testing. So just group it up and then duplicate this group a couple of times so that you can test different palettes with this portrait group. To test your palette is really easy, just turn off the shading layer first and then select the base layer. Then after that, drop in the skin tone for the base layer and drop in your red skin tone into your lips or you can use the primary red. Then you can drop white into the eyes and then after that, you can drop any color you like into the iris and the hair. Then now go back to your outline layer, turn on alpha lock, pick black and paint the entire layer with this black. This is to test if your black is dark or light enough for what you want to achieve. Lastly, go to your shading layer, change it to multiply blending mode and then turn on alpha lock. Paint the exact same color for the hair, so here I'm painting blue and then of course you can gradient it with other colors that you like, like I'm doing it with red and green here. For the lips, you can test with orange red or the skin tone red but you can use a lighter touch because if you use a very strong touch, you might end up with no shadows at all. 
For the skin, use the orange version of the skin tone and paint the entire layer first. Then after that, use reds and paint your ears, your eyes, your nose and the cheeks and anywhere else you think you need red. Then after that, you can refine the eyes with red and then the center of the iris with other colors such as green like what I'm using here. For the final touch, you can check and see if the shading layer is dark enough. If not, you can just duplicate this layer and adjust the opacity as you see fit. Then you can save this quick sample for reference and do this for every palette that you have. In any other situation, other objects can be painted with the relative color. So for example, if you have an object that is blue, just pick the equivalent blue in your palette and paint it that way. So here I'm just dumping in the yellow and the blue and the red and we are also going to dump in the black and white. So we have this ball here so that we can check our primary colors because sometimes we might not have actual swatches for the primary colors. You will see what I mean later on. Okay, now that we have covered how to test our palette on the portrait and the ball, it is time for us to continue exploring more about colors. The reference that I'll be showing today, you can get it from my website heyswang.com so you can just download the reference there. It is a Procreate project with all the palettes available and two groups of portrait and ball for you to test your colors on. There are other colour schemes that we can use as long as we follow a few rules. So the first rule that we have to follow is we have to keep important values. So please set the limit of your brightness and your darkness when you are creating your palette in the beginning. You should first consider how you want your painting to turn out. Is it going to be very dark all the time? Or is it going to be very contrasty and have very bright and dark values at the same time? Or is it a high key painting with very light values? You have to decide your black and white from this. So don't regret if if you pick a light brown when you realize that you actually need a darker brown later on. So this is an example of a palette that I have. The black is actually a dark brown. So you can see that it's quite pleasant here. The moment that my black becomes light, like a very light brown, the entire dynamic of this palette would change. First of all, our outline will become too light and when we zoom in, it will be lighter than the colors that are surrounding it. Like for example, the shading will be darker than the outline itself. So this is what we do not want. Also, this will affect all the colors that we mix into the circle swatches. Like for example, if my white is a lot darker, then the skin tone will all be a lot darker as well and it will turn out like this. You have to visualize your painting first and then plan your values accordingly. If you know you're gonna need a dark value of blue, make sure you have that in your palette. This is an example of the dark blue that I'm talking about because I really really need dark blue for my swatches. So in my swatches, I have dark blue and not light blue as the main swatch. So my main swatch is gonna be the dark blue right here. The blue is really really vibrant and all the other colors are very very dull in comparison especially just for this purpose. The second rule is you need to keep important colors. For example here maybe I really want this green and I really want this pink. So these two colors are going to be in my main swatches and if I know that I won't be using any blues, I can omit blue altogether from my palette. This is a complementary color scheme where the colors are opposite of each other and it is used when you need odd colors colors like this but you won't be able to mix a skin tone with these limited colors of just two colors so it's easier if you expand to the split complementary color scheme which has three colors so you can either pick next to green which is yellow or next to pink which is red or orange I choose to pick yellow for my color so I have three color now and now we have to figure out the neutral colors black and white you can pick the black and white from any of these swatches here I pick green and I just pick a black from somewhere here same goes for the white pick it from any of the three colors and then after that please make sure that your black and whites are dark and light enough so all the original swatches are in hexagon and now regardless of how many colors you have, try to mix them all up and get tints from them and see if you can get orange, red or blue. Sometimes you can be lucky and get your primary colors this way. In this palette, luckily I can get my red and my orange but my blue is a very very sad grey but it's fine, we won't be needing blue for this and then after that use your greys to mix your skin tone with your red and oranges. 
and of course we must test it out on our portrait so I'm just testing out the same way we test out all our portraits with the palette and you can see here that as soon as I am done this portrait is completely in harmony with my background I also fill in the primary color ball to check how it looks like in the ball by the way, Procreate can help you in creating color schemes. Just go to the Harmony tool in your color picker and you can see here as soon as you get there, I mean my split complementary color scheme and I can just drag them and see what colors that I can get from them. And if you tap on the text below colors, you can see there's a lot more options other than split complementary. There's this complementary color scheme which is just two colors compared to three and then there's the analogous color scheme which are colors that are right next to each other just like this color scheme right here and then we have the triadic color scheme which is three colors and tetradic color scheme which is four colors. Just bear in mind that this tool can only help you pick colors in one value so if you pick a darker color every other color will become dark so it's still better for you to create your color schemes manually. So if you look here, our previous palette has the split complementary color scheme which is pink, green and yellow and also if you notice here, the pink, green and yellow are equally as vibrant but if we desaturate all the main colors except for one, the pink here would remain the most vibrant and then every other color will be affected by this when we create the tints so our portrait will end up having a glow in the remaining color which is the pink so you can see here the colors are stronger in the top portrait in general but the pink will stand out a lot more in the ones below so if you want to draw attention to one particular color this is how you can do it the third golden rule of color is color temperature is more important than color itself so as you know color temperature is divided into warm and cold color temperature it is also subjective depending on the palette itself the zone palette is this case, in this case of a very limited color palette, we only have two colors to work with which is cadmium red and yellow ochre. So in this case, the black and white and the greys that come from the black and white serve as the cold temperature and can even serve as blue. So this palette has only yellow ochre and cadmium red light with Mars black and titanium white. So yellow ochre plus grey is actually our version of a green here and red plus grey is our purple here and in extreme extreme cases the greys are being used for blue but we're gonna just leave the blue slot empty for now here are some examples of painting done in the zone palette this is a very effective color palette for portraits because it's very warm and it uses black and white for the cool colors it also has a very very strong red which is essential for portrait painting and here is my test portrait done in zone palette color scheme so as long as we have different color temperatures, we will be able to color a portrait. So in this case, black and white is cold and yellow and red is warm. This concept is especially important for analogous color scheme because the colors are right next to each other and it's quite difficult for us to identify which is the hot or cold colors. So in this case, you can either choose a color to be cold or hot or you can use black and white to shift the temperature of your colors itself. So for example, this analog skin from pink to purple, I have very very close colors and the skin tone is made out of a very 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 grey pink and the red from the skin tone is from the purple and the orange of the skin tone is from the pink but as long as the color temperature relationship is managed the right way, the portrait will still make sense so the challenge is to use a blue analogous scheme and decide which of these colors are cold and which colors are hot. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. In my color scheme here, I've maintained that the purple is warm and the green is cold. Do you think that this could work the other way around? So the key to achieving what I just did is to map the entire painting according to temperature to avoid confusion. Mapping usually means grouping temperatures into lighting groups. So for example, cold colors into shadows and warm colors into highlights. So in art school, we were taught that warm light will create cold shadow and if cold light will create warm shadows. So you must make this obvious in order for your painting to work. In the same sense, your painting usually only can have one rule happening. So if there's warm light, the entire painting has to have cold shadows. But if you have multiple light sources, usually it's better to just use one rule to apply for the entire painting. 
Remember the ball that we have that's made of primary colors? Let's go back to that. Um, I'm just going to create a layer made of shadows and the light as well. I'm going to alpha lock the shadow and then we can just test the temperature right here. So here I'm just going to put this in blue. Once I put this layer in multiply, this shadow layer will start to make sense. But if you find that your shadow is too vibrant, you can just mix the blue with grey and use that to colour for the shadow instead to dull it a little bit. Now let's turn on the highlights layer and alpha lock it and also set it to either a screen or add blending mode. Now because my shadow layer is blue which is a cold temperature, I need to use the other side which is a warm temperature so a yellow would work very well for this. Now some of you may say that I'm cheating because I'm using the blending mode to create the shadows instead so I'm going to show you how to do it manually as well. So now we have red and we need to push it to a colder temperature. So I'm using blue to push it to the colder temperature and I'm using black to make it darker. And the color that comes out is exactly the same as the shadow color from before. Using yellow, we can use the same concept as well. But this time, instead of using blue, I'm using green because it's much closer to yellow to push the temperature to become colder instead. And the color that comes out is exactly the same as the shadow from before as well. Use this ball as a reference next to your portrait so you can see how the shadows and lighting will appear for your other colors. So there are other color schemes available as well, especially if you need more than three colors. So in this case, we can have the tetradic color scheme which consists of four colors. We usually do not need as much as 4, 4 is already a bit much. I usually use tetradic if I need a strong secondary colour like this. This has orange, a green and purple with blue primary colour. And if you see here, all 4 colours are very vibrant which is not ideal so let's neutralise some of them. Regardless of how many colours we have, we have to first blend them into tints to fill up the rest of the circle. I find that purple and orange gives me red so I'm using this for my red in my primary colours. This can be derived from the normal colour wheel where orange and purple in between is red so if you mix orange and purple in between you get red. We are still missing the yellow so here orange and green gives me yellow so if I mix both of them together somehow I will get yellow in between. Because they are mixed together like this so the colours are not very vibrant, they are often just neutral tints that we can use but this is useful nonetheless when we use this to paint our painting. We can pick our black and whites from any of the colours that we already have. So my black comes from the blue and my white comes from the thick yellow. Then once we have all this, we can blend the black and whites together to get our grey scale. And using the grey scale, we can mix our skin tone. I'm using purple to mix my base skin tone. Then of course, I will have to have the red version of the skin tone and also the orange version of the skin tone. Usually when we paint, we expand the palette into tints like this so that we can have more swatches to pick from when we are painting. But to save your palettes, it's easier to save them in a compressed form like this with the primary ball and also the test portrait for us to keep as a reference. But what about the most limited colour scheme? Rembrandt sketches the Eke Homo using just one colour which is the burnt sienna only and then he uses black and white for the temperature shift. Okay, here I have the colour of burnt sienna on my screen and if I just blend it with white, I will get something like a reddish, pale reddish colour here which is actually wrong. If you see here, I have an actual burnt sienna here. When I mix it with white, it actually goes a little bit more yellow. So this is actually the property of the traditional pigment here that cannot be simulated in digital format. So if we want to have the colours appear correctly here, we have to actually change the temperature a little bit. And now I have my yellow already and it's roughly the same colour or temperature that I have in my other notebook. Then of course after this, we can use our grey tones here and try and mix our skin tones from whatever colours that we have and fill in all the secondary colours if there's even any. You'll be surprised that just one colour is sufficient to show light, shadow and modelling which is really really quick and efficient for you to lock your sketches and even as a painting. So as an artist, we often fall in love with a lot of colours 
and sometimes we can use too many colors in our painting and then we wonder why we can't achieve a colorful effect but actually we require a lot more control in our palette to achieve such effect so remember to experiment more because learning about this in theory would require for you to practice quite some time before it actually sinks in and the understanding actually happens so thank you so much for watching today's video you can get today's reference at hazelong.com this has the project file for the procreate which has all the palettes here that i showed today and also the portrait test group and also the ball test group as well so remember to comment like and subscribe and do let me know what kind of tutorials that you're looking forward to next time see you next time bye